guys, Taylor here with Facts on Firearm Safety with our expert, Skip. Hi, folks. Okay, this is an important one. Malfunctions when firing a weapon and how do we correct them? First, delayed discharge. This is when you fire your weapon and nothing happens to the bullet. Rule number one is keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction. Then wait 30 seconds before you attempt to clear or unload the round. Number two is what's called a squib load. When you shoot your firearm and the bullet does not have adequate powder for the projectile to clear the barrel. Now the projectile is lodged in the barrel. What do you do? Well, first, keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction. Then unload the firearm. If you're at a gun range, you may ask the range officer to help you clear the projectile from your barrel. If you're doing this yourself, once the firearm is completely unloaded and when the action is open, use a cleaning tool. Insert it at the muzzle end of the firearm located where the front sight is. Then push the projectile backwards towards the action. This will remove the projectile that is blocking the barrel. Never ever shoot another bullet to clear that bullet. Next, stovepipe. This happens on a semi-automatic firearm when a bullet is fired and the spent cartridge does not clear the action. Instead, it catches in the action, preventing another round from firing. This unfortunately happens a lot in semi-automatics and primarily handguns. So how do we deal with this one, Skip? This one can be a little tricky. Given the possibility of another round, as in one may be a, have been loaded in the chamber upon the firing of the first round. If you can, set your selector to the safe position. Remove the magazine, always keeping the gun pointed in a safe direction. Your finger should be completely away from the trigger. Then grip the semi-automatic top receiver. Pull it back to clear the spent case that was blocking the action. If a round was loaded into the chamber, go ahead and clear that round as well. You may at this point choose to check the cleanliness of the gun to ensure there are no obstructions in the action. You may also want to change the ammunition that you were using that caused this problem. Always think safety. So Taylor, earlier we talked about the three basic types of malfunctions. We're gonna to try to uh, imitate those malfunctions, although uh, it's not as practical as we'd like to, but we can give a good demonstration. Now, the first one you talked about was a delayed discharge, okay? And delayed discharge happens. It happens in a long gun, happens in a shotgun, rifle, pistol. It can happen at any time. Some way, somehow, the ammunition got compromised. Someone didn't keep it separate when they were cleaning. They got solvent, it compromised the primer, it doesn't want to go off. So if we are at the range and we are shooting, bang, bang, click. If it goes click, stop. Take our finger off the trigger. Now, don't do a thing, but keep it pointed in a safe direction and wait 30 seconds. I can tell you, in shooting competition, 30 seconds sounds like a lifetime, especially when you get in the zone. But to be safe, you need to wait at least 30 seconds. Once 30 seconds has expired, then carefully open the action, unload all the ammunition, and then set the firearm down and inspect the ammunition that you got out. It either dented the primer or it didn't at all. And what I would do is change ammunition completely. That's how we handle the delayed discharge. Perfect. Okay. Another one that's very hard to, to, uh, to simulate is a squib load. Now squib load happens more with folks that like to reload ammunition. And guys that are serious reloaders are like mad scientists. Don't disturb me, I'm dropping powder now, and they have all their special concoctions, and unfortunately their cell phone rings, they forgot what step they were in, and they went ahead and completed the bullet, and it didn't get enough powder in. And the squib load goes something like this. You're at the range, you're shooting, bang, bang, and then pop. <laughs> you go, what was that? 
Well, what that was, was there wasn't quite enough powder to make the projectile separate, and now it's stuck in the barrel. Kind of like getting something caught in your throat. So, what we want to do is keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction, finger off the trigger, open the action, unload the ammunition. Then, if you're at the range, you can always ask the range officer if he can help you. They have a myriad of tools, but if not, take your cleaning rod, insert it from the front where the front blade side is, and push backwards to get the projectile out. The reason we push it backwards is the actual diameter is only at the muzzle. This is called a forcing cone. It's a little larger and it constricts as it goes to the front. So pushing backwards, it has more room to dislodge it. And that's how we take care of a squib load. Perfect. So remember we had, there was a tricky one. That tricky one is what we call the stovepipe. And it's kind of tricky because what happens, you're at the range, you're shooting, and then you go to squeeze the trigger again and nothing happens. It's not because you're out of ammo, but now you see that you have a cartridge that did not exit the ejection port. It's now caught with the pressure of the slide of the receiver. So what we have to do is we have to clear that. Now, at the range, not a big deal, but if you were in a combat situation or you were defending yourself, it's something that takes some practice. And also, think about how you could do that if you only had one hand available, okay? That's where we talked about in earlier about being competent with your handgun. So what you have to do is you have to release pressure, turn to the side, dump that cartridge, now make sure one is loaded. You may want to check and go ahead and let one come out again, just in case there's a problem. Do an inspection to make sure that it's clear of debris, load another, and then squeeze the trigger again. That's how we take care of a stovepipe. A little tricky, a little tough to do one-handed, but can be done, but it's a tough one. So are stovepipes, is there a gun that they typically occur in more often? I notice with my small handgun, it occurs a lot. Okay, so now I'm gonna have a big question that'll help me answer that. Does it, do you notice it when you're shooting the full metal jacket practice ammo or shooting the hollow point ammo? Hollow point. The hollow point. Perfect, so that's, that's the answer I was looking for. Semi-automatics are a lot like cats. They're finicky about what they wanna eat. And they better be clean if you're gonna feed them. And all hollow point ammunition, as we saw earlier, is not the same. So not all hollow point ammunition feeds the same. So make sure the hollow point that you choose make sure you fire enough rounds so that you know it will successfully, successfully feed or not. That's a fantastic question, and you're right. That's the number one cause of a stovepipe. The second little thing that can help is a weak grip. So if you don't help with that recoil and give a solid foundation, if you're holding it very lightly, the recoil can't really react and let that slide come back enough to eject the shell. Those two things are the biggest cause of a stovepipe, but mainly hollow point ammunition that doesn't like to feed. That's very interesting. Okay. Now, you had mentioned that not every malfunction can occur in every handgun? Correct. So in a revolver, you really don't have a place for a stovepipe to occur because you're opening the action manually to unload and load. Well, perfect. That was an awesome display you gave us there, Skip. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. It was super informative. We look forward to seeing you next episode. <laughs>